JJ the CPA. Hope you're doing well. Hey, wanted to touch base on some updates related to the IRS, some big updates. Uh, these economic impact checks, stimulus checks, the $1,200, $2,400 for a couple, $500 for uh, kiddos. Uh, in the coming weeks, the IRS is going to have on their website a way that you can log in and give your most current depository information or if you have never given it to them because you've owed in years past um, this is a way that you can get that to them my understanding is is that we're still two weeks off before the first checks are going to arrive and hit your bank account the first ones that will go out will be the ones that are to be direct deposited then that uh, will follow uh, or what will follow after that is the ones that are by check and the ones that will follow after that will be the ones that had and filed for, I think, either period of time. So real quick on that, also to note is that if your income, whether it's 18 or 19, depending on when the last uh, return you filed was, if your income for an individual is under 75 grand, you'll get the full amount. Uh, between 75 grand and 99 grand, it'll start to uh, phase out. And then once your income's at 99 grand, you're out. It's based on the adjusted gross income, uh, which is before your itemized deductions or the standard deduction, but it would be the net income from your capital gains and your interest and your dividends and your business income and then any kind of deductions such as self-employment, uh, health insurance or IRAs, uh, your wages. And so it's kind of the the end bowl of wax right before the standard deduction and the itemized deductions uh, for a married filing jointly. Uh, it's just double what I had just told you in the sense that if your income AGI is 150,000 or less, um, you're going to get it all between 150,000 and 198,000. Uh, it will start to phase out on the tax credits. I have been waiting for this one and I'm not happy with it, uh, but it is now clear. Um, that the tax credits that are in play um, that came out of the family's first coronavirus um, that was uh, the sick leave and then also related to the ex expansion of the Family and Medical Leave Act. Uh, and then also in the CARES Act, we had the employee retention tax credit come into play. Uh, but what they've indicated, and I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed, um, I'm really really disappointed uh, in the government on this one in the sense of the effective date, but it's for leave on or after April 1st. And it, the reason I'm frustrated with it is on behalf of my clients, but there's been a lot of leave that my clients have already been paying for for their employees. And it's not that they were paying their employees expecting the credits, um, but for there to be this much and this long of uncertainty about that is really just no reason for it. Um, they've also come out with the form 7200 uh, and that is where you're going to report your tax credits. Um, and so look for that if you're doing your own payroll. Um, if you recall, I've got a lot of videos on the tax credits. I know that's kind of not been as interesting because the PPP has really taken the spotlight. Um, but note that the way that you experience that tax credit immediately is by reducing down on the spot the amount that then gets um, deducted from what you pay in to the IRS. So um, I'm going to put a link into the um, body of this. Um, that gives you uh, to the IRS's updated information about the economic impact checks. I'm going to put a link in here to the frequently asked questions on all the tax credits. Uh, the IRS did really do a good job. They listed a ton of frequently asked questions in a very logical way, um, very helpful. Uh, I had a few other minor questions um, that, uh, that I was trying to just double check. Uh, that what I had said in the past was correct, and it is. Um, I was not sure of the of the effective date, and uh, so it'll be leave on for one or after for those uh, three credits that we just talked about. And then, hey, just real quick on the uh, PPP, I'm not sure why. A little disappointing on this as well, 
but self-employed individuals um, will be able to start applying for that um, on April 10th. So they'll need to get their ducks in a row, still waiting for guidance on how you determine the beginning number, which is for an employee, it's clear what the payroll costs are, but if you're self-employed, how are they determining that? Seems logical to be the net self-employment income, but it seems also logical that there might be some expenses not included in arriving at net income, such as depreciation. And the last thing I'm going to note is, you know, for those that are thinking the PPP is the way to go, which does, does seem to be the way to go, I've got a, a video on this and I'll put a, I'll put a tag right above, uh, right there, that I do a uh, break even um, analysis, meaning there's the COVID-19 disaster loan, which is also the EIDL, which is also the economic injury disaster loan. All three of those just have some nicknames, but they're all the same thing. And it's a $10,000 uh, relief from the government that you don't have to pay back. You just don't have to pay it back. It's not based on if you do this, you don't have to pay it back. But the thing to note on that, it's 10 grand. So especially for self-employed individuals, if it is going to be based on your net income for the triple P, um, if your net income is 48,000 or less, your triple P is going to result in 10,000 or less. Therefore, maybe don't wait and go get the COVID-19 EIDL because you get either or, okay? You don't get both. You get penalized if you get both. But the point is, is that if you're gonna be starting with the number 48,000, there's no reason to get the triple P. Go ahead and get the Kevin Knight Coven 19. It's actually better because you don't have to you don't have to actually do anything for it to become forgiven. All right, hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, just some quick updates there on the IRS. Don't forget now about the tax credits. Um, I will be doing some other videos related to the tax credits and how it mixes with the triple P because you aren't able to take the tax credits if Triple P is picking up the bill. And then in the guidance that came out yesterday from the SBA, quite disappointed uh, to learn that it's created more confusion and it's specifically related to federal and FICA taxes being withheld as a reduction of the payroll cost. The confusion that's created is, well, is that reduction to the payroll cost when determining the loan? I believe the answer is no. But it does seem to be that you are only including the net pay, makes no sense to me, the net pay of the employees come forgiveness time, which almost then guarantees there's going to be a loan portion to be paid back. Feels a little sneaky because that really wasn't the intention. I don't think that, uh, I, I think the interpretation that's coming out of that from the SBA is, um, a little too technical and a little too literal, and it's definitely not within the spirit of the Triple P. All right, hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Hashtag JJ the CPA to get me on any social media. I hope you have a great day, and thanks again for tuning in and all the great comments. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. All right, have a great day.